Bonjour. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it really is a great pleasure for me to be here and to participate in this rencontre with our sister agency in uh, France. Uh, I guess here we are the other National Cancer Institute, and this is the vrai uh, Inca. Okay. I'm going to uh, Fabien asked me to try to discuss with you during the 12 minutes that I have some major research challenges and how we at the National Cancer Institute in the United States are trying to address them. And I think that it, we really need to begin with what I feel is a central paradox. The challenge is that we currently have enormous opportunities for progress, but budgets are flat or declining, while the cost of cutting edge research continues to increase. And consequently, we run out of money long before we run out of good ideas to evaluate. And instead of lamenting, uh, the amount of funds that we have. We have tried to focus on making the best use of the funds that we do have while continuing to hope that there will be increased support. This slide shows you uh, what has happened to the budget of the National Institutes of Health in the United States between 1998 and 2014. The actual budget of the NIH is shown in the blue bars, and the yellow bars represent the inflation-adjusted budget. And in green, I have indicated the period between two, 1998 and 2003 when the budget of the NIH doubled. I am going to use that in the next slide, but here what I would like you to appreciate is that since the doubling of the budget, the budget has been essentially flat in absolute terms, but in terms of the purchasing power of uh, the research, it actually has been going down. The next slide shows you over a longer timeline the success rate of grant applications between 1978 and 2014. And in green, I have showed you the period of the budget doubling. And we have really a very unfortunate situation, which is that although we uh, have doubled the amount of money available, since about 2004 or 2005, the success rate of grant applications to the NIH has actually gone down to the lowest historical levels. The reason for this is that as a result of the budget doubling, there was a vast increase in the number of investigators uh, who uh, were hired by different institutions, we have a much more decentralized system than in France. And so it is much more difficult for us to support in a sustainable manner the uh, number of researchers that we currently have. But this budget uh, sh uh, decrease uh, has, I think, led to at least five consequences which I would like to share with you uh, over the next few minutes and then uh, with a final slide on some conceptual problems. So one challenge of this is that when funds are limited, there is a tendency to become more conservative in the research that is supported. And so one of the approaches that we have taken is to pro programmatically promote high risk, high reward research. And <clears throat> the NCI is promoting exploratory grants that do not require preliminary data through special program announcements and through funding more of them during this period. We also have 
enhanced oversight of the peer review process for grant applications to make sure that we are supporting the most innovative and uh, grant applications and the ones that we think have the highest likelihood of succeeding and making an impact. And then finally, the example of the Provocative Questions Initiative. This initiative represents the development of a list of important but non-obvious questions that are able to stimulate the NCI's research communities to use laboratory, clinical, and population sciences in especially effective and imaginative ways. And there was a paper published uh, in 2012 by Harold Varmus, the director of the NCI, and Ed Harlow, a special uh, advisor to the NCI, about this. The selected questions have been proposed during PQ workshops by investigators who are actually not from the NCI. So the, and these proposals are intended to build on specific advances in our understanding of cancer and cancer control and to address broad issues in the biology of cancer that have proven difficult to resolve. So this is one other particular example where we are trying to emphasize innovation and the potential for improved understanding and impact. A second challenge is that when funds are limited, there is a tendency to give more emphasis to translational and clinical research and less to basic research, etiology research, and prevention research. And so what we have tried to do uh, is, to tr is to recognize that basic research etiology research and prevention research will come primarily through support in the public nonprofit sector. This slide shows you a simplified view of the interaction between the private and public sectors as we view them uh, at the NIH. <clears throat> the goal for the long term is to improve outcomes for disease. And the private sector, however, has a much shorter timeline because they are a for-profit sector, whereas the public sector is able to have a much longer timeline. And we are the only institutions, that is, in the public nonprofit sector, that can support the basic research. Uh, whereas we also are involved in translational and clinical research, we do it in order to try to complement the research that is going on in the uh, private sector. A third challenge is that there is a tendency to support more programmatic research and less investigator-initiated research. And at the NCI, we continue to protect the funding for investigator-initiated research because that research has been proven to be highly successful, uh, especially on the experimental uh, level. A fourth challenge is the tendency not to start new initiatives. And in order to overcome this challenge, we have tried to really two different approaches. First, we need to make the difficult choices to scale back or eliminate programs that are having less impact. And second, we need to make sure that new programs have been discussed widely by the research community and have the potential for high impact. And I will give you the example of the RAS program, which is a new $10 million a year program to try to intervene to develop specific targeted therapy against tumors that have mutant RAS genes. Cancers with mutant RAS genes are resistant to standard treatment, and there is no successful targeted drugs for cancer with mutant RAS. This has been known for almost 30 years, but thus far there hasn't been success. However, we feel that the technology and understanding has improved sufficiently recently so that there might be a potential for success. 
there are four different KRAS mutations in the three cancers below that account actually for more than 125,000 cases each year in the United States, and obviously globally for many more uh, cancers than these. And it's possible that by trying to target specific mutations that maybe we will be more successful than trying to develop global inhibition of, uh, mutant, uh, of mutant RAS genes. The fifth and last challenge uh, that I want to mention is the tendency to turn inward and fund only US-based research. And at the NCI, we have really tried two different approaches to deal with this. First, uh, Dr. Varmus created the NCI Center for Global Health when he became the NCI director. And it's oriented towards cancer control in the developing world. And we have recently allocated special funds for developing and testing both diagnostic and therapeutic interventions that are most appropriate for the developing world. But in addition, in the uh, on a more global level, including the industrialized world, we have tried to enhance international collaborations, including those with France. And it's very important to try to break down the barriers and to leverage our resources. Cancer in many parts of the world has similarities, although there are unique aspects uh, as one goes to different countries. Cancer is too big a problem to be solved by one country. And we can make faster progress and avoid needless duplication by working together and by widespread sharing of detailed data. A few examples of the alliances and collaborations are a joint INCA-NCI clinical trial for the treatment of advanced chondrosarcoma, the USA-France Working Group on Large-Scale Infrastructure for Life Sciences, which includes the science of biobanking, partnering between the European Clinical Research Infrastructure Network and the NCI, joint funding of projects between IARC and the NCI, and the International Cancer Genome uh, Alliance, uh, <coughs> Genome Consortium, uh, which you will be hearing about from the next speaker, uh, Dr. Hudson. For my last slide, I also want to uh, emphasize that cancer research and cancer actually aren't what they used to be. At the level of cancer research, cutting edge research is now so complex that it often needs interdisciplinary teams. And where appropriate, we need to support a team approach and to provide adequate recognition for the various members of the team for their distinct and distinctive contributions. In addition, ca the cancer genome revolution, which you will hear about more from Dr. <coughs> uh, in the, ne in, in the next uh, talk from Dr. Hudson, the revolution is changing the traditional view that cancer is simply a disease of specific organs. Now, it is recognized that even cancer within a given organ is extremely heterogeneous, but that cancers of different organs may harbor actually the same driver mutation or mutations and may respond to treatment by the same targeted drug. Thus, I've tried to explain to you how our budgetary problems re, uh, really pose multiple challenges which we can try to address, but that there are enormous opportunities for making progress uh, at all levels. And in addition, that our understanding of cancer is really at an inflection point that is uh, due to change, and you will be hearing a lot about that uh, in the course of the next talk. Thank you so much for your attention.